Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining in. We are at week 11 of our, uh, of our course and of our class. Um, we've been looking at uh, many elements of uh, uh, Christian marriage and family, and we're going to be um, just focusing on the last aspect of it. We've, we've uh, looked at very many different aspects of, of a healthy marriage and elements that make a healthy marriage. And today we're going to um, focus again on one of the most important elements of a Christian marriage, which is the family altar, um, the spiritual nurturance of, uh, of, a, of family. Okay, so uh, today we're going to, like I did mention, we're not going in chronological order in the book. Okay, so we picked up elements so that we can club them together to have um, some structure to it. Uh, so if you are following through in your notes or in your books, I'm on uh, chapter 70, which is page 177 on, uh, on the books uh, and also on the notes, it's also this, uh, it's the same, it's uh, page 177. So we will be um, learning chapter 17, and in the next um, hour, we look at chapter 16 as well, okay? All right, so if you're following through, please go ahead and you know look through the notes as we are uh, reading, uh, we're, we're learning about this. Um, so uh, the spiritual part, of, of a family is a very important part of, of that unit. Okay? And uh, it is necessary for the family, uh, members of the family, to nurture one another in, in their spiritual growth, spiritual maturity, um, uh, in, in their spiritual life. Okay? So, uh, some part of it is what we are uh, going to discuss, and, and uh, some of it we will look at in the chapter uh, that we're doing next uh, next hour. So, uh, how does a family develop an understanding of um, of spiritual practices, disciplines, um, the importance of being in uh, what, what a church means to to the to the family as a smaller unit, to a greater to the family of God, um, what does it mean to serve the church? So all of this understanding comes from the family. So what we're doing is to help families develop an understanding of what spiritual disciplines mean, of what uh, what is the importance of being part of a of a, of a larger family of God, the import, the understanding of a local church community, and how do we nurture the family to understand what the kingdom of God means and how the family can further themselves in accomplishing things for the kingdom of God. Okay, <clears throat> so one of the ways in which that is done is to be to be a part of a, a church, to be a part of a church that uh, roots itself on the word, that is centered around uh, the faith that we have in Christ Jesus, and also a church that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, we nurture the family in understanding what what it is, what it means to be in a local church um, by being a part of a, uh, of a church that believes in the word of God, that believes a, a, as its doctrines, the faith that they have is in Jesus. And the central part of our belief is Jesus. And, uh, uh, and also where a church manifests the presence of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Okay, So as a family, it is important to be in planted or to be established in the house of god okay uh, and it's it is essential just like 
you know, when uh, when we put children to school, it's always good that children don't move from school to school, because uh, you know you don't you, you're not establishing uh, the child in a certain foundation of learning or the principles of certain education practices. So it's important for the family to, as best as possible, to stay in one church community rather than keeping on moving from place to place where there it, where it makes it difficult for you to establish relationships establish connection establish accountability to the body uh, to, to the body okay so it is recommended that the family stay and um, uh, be planted in one community in one church community rather than you know hopping around different churches okay so what 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 are you doing what what would you do to nurture a family in the practice of being in a community so one of the first things is to establish the practice of being in church every sunday okay so when we look at um, uh, the early church, we see that the early church met regularly. Uh, and, and this was generally, at, at that point of time, they, might, they would have probably met together in some house or in some common place. Okay? Uh, and it, so just at the, the early church, when they made that practice of meeting often, there a new setup was established. The church was established. The church is just a body of believers, rather than a, rather than it being a, a building. And if you look at in um, uh, in in Acts, it says they made it a practice to meet uh, to meet one day, first day of the week. They made it that practice. Okay, so just like that, we establish the practice of being in church together with those who know the Lord, with those who believe, with other believers, so that we can come together to pray, uh, to worship, to um, meditate on God's word, to live life together, to uh, encourage, to pray, to comfort one another. When we look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25, the author talks about this. It says, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, it's written, let us be concerned for one another to help one another to show love and to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. Okay? So it is, uh, uh, it's, it's something that you practice and making it uh, happen week after week. All right, making it a norm, okay? Uh, and because through that, you're uh, growing, you're also part of a larger community. Now, it can be true that there may be some points of time that you may not be able to make it to church, okay? Um, because of some kind of a challenge in your, in your setting of work or where you're studying. But as a practice to ensure that you do it on a regular basis, to establish that practice, to make that a commitment to be uh, in church, OK? Um, so the, it, it doesn't matter which day you're meeting, it just as long as you know, you're know you meeting together. Because in some parts of the world, they don't meet on a Sunday. They meet on a different day. The, uh, the, um, it is to come together with your family, together in church, uh, so that there is a time for worship and, and prayer together. So, so the importance of that discipline, importance of that practice, not as a ritual, but as something that establishes us uh, in our faith, in our growth, in our walk with God, uh, in our maturity, in our love for one another, it establishes that. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, to, to belong to the family of God. Now, it, it, we, you know, we should keep away from the notion that church is just a place where we go uh, to attend a, a, a service, right? But, uh, but when we look at the family of God, it's called God's household. First Timothy 3.15 says, 
um, this letter will let you know how we should conduct ourselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. So the church is God's family, is his home. Okay, And uh, we, we need to uh, understand and nurture, um, with ensure with our families that we belong to a, a certain church family, which is, you know, the family of God. So being in a family, you know, just talking about being in a family, you know that there are, you develop relationships with people, you share, you encourage, you support, you love, you bless, you uphold. So these are things that happens in a family, right? So similarly, we are to belong to the family of God where we are experiencing these meaningful relationships um, and, and growing together in a community together. Okay, So the importance of establishing with the family that it is necessary to belong to, to a family of God, to a specific church. Okay? Uh, another part of nurturing uh, spiritual growth is the ability to serve. Okay? Uh, now, each of us have been given a gift we've been given certain graces, certain gifting that God has put into our lives so that we can use it for the benefit of others. All right. Uh, we'll read First Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. Can somebody read that, please? First Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. Anyone? First Peter chapter four, verses ten to eleven. Um, am I audible to everybody? Is everyone yes. now? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, read. Please read. Yes, please. Yes. Each one has received a gift. Minister it to one another as good as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, in whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jacqueline. So <clears throat> the... Uh, as I was saying, each each of us, God has endowed and gifted each one of us with different graces or different giftings, which we are to use for the benefit and for the glory of God. So um, it, it is not meant for us to keep it to ourselves, or neither is it meant for us to... Um, you know, showcase our talents or our skills, but it is used to serve God and it is used to glorify God. So no matter what gifting you may have, it may be, and there is no big or small gifting. Each of us have something that's given to us that God desires that we make use of. So it may be those who speak the word, those who may be worshipping, those who may be cleaning the chairs and putting things in order, those who may be, um, may be greeting people, those who may be making coffee, all of that are different graces that is given to us. And we, we do it to, with, the, with the very one purpose of serving God and glorifying him through what he has put in us, through the gifting that he has put in us. So in our families, uh, each member needs to encourage and, and especially parents encouraging children to engage in serving their church serving that local church either through their efforts through their time or skills or any kind of gifting that's given them so that the ministry so that the work of of god can be accomplished okay so no work is menial, no work is small, no work is looked down upon. Everything is, is, uh, is something that we are offering as a, as a, as an, as a, uh, 
um, uh, as a service to God and his people and his kingdom. Okay, So uh, to encourage even children as they're growing up to do something to sow into the into the community, so into the church community. Okay, as part of uh, being in church, one of the important things about uh, about belonging to a church community is what we call as mentorship, men or mentoring. Okay, where you are nurturing younger people. Right. If you read Titus chapter two verses three and four, it says, "In the same way." instruct the older women to behave as women should should who live a holy life they must not be slanderers or slaves to wine they must teach what is good in order to train the younger women to love their husbands and children okay so uh, but when we belong think about this when you belong to to a human family or to a natural family you have the older generation, you have the middle generation, you have the younger generation, right? And what are you doing here? The, the older people instruct or train or nurture the younger people in different things uh, concerning life, concerning the home, concerning the family, OK? And so also, when we're looking at the family of God, um, this is what Paul instructs. And says, I know this. the The entire verse uh, looks as if the instruction is for older women to uh, to train the younger women. But we can infer that even that even the uh, even the uh, older men would need to engage with the younger men in 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 different things of their living, right? So uh, he's encouraging. Uh, Paul has been encouraging. Um, uh, you know, to 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 live, to encouraging the church to live in such a way that you are the older people are setting an example to the younger ones, or uh, that is, there are people who are modeling uh, what it means to uh, live life to the other believers, or what it is to be a disciple or to be children of God to those who are younger. So the older mentoring the younger happens in, in human natural families. And that's what Paul encourages and says, you know, this is another thing that we should be doing to, um, to encourage, to mentor those who are younger. And this can be through different issues or walks of life. It's one is spiritual mentoring, but there can be other forms of mentoring as well. Maybe uh, older uh, people help younger people, younger homes on parenting or on issues with marriage or on maintaining finances or on probably job uh, concerns or job issues. So that as a family, we encourage and help one another. OK, so one of the things that uh, um, Paul tells Timothy in Timothy in First Timothy 4:12 is do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but be an example for the believers in your speech, in your conduct, your love, your faith, and your purity. So it is um, it is nurturing others one one another in by by modeling a behavior a behavior. Now, this uh, Paul was talking to Timothy as he was a young man, uh, and you know, uh, and he was leading that church at that point of time. Uh, but we can take the principle out of it, saying, "Be an example for the other believers in your speech, in your conduct, in your love, in your faith, and your your purity." So, uh, whatever we are doing, or however we we live, or however we behave. We remember that we are being watched or we are being looked at. So model a certain behavior, model a behavior that um, is true to the calling that we have. So giving ourselves uh, or in, in this way to the community that we are in. Okay. Um, another important part of uh, nurturing the family uh, spiritually is 
life groups is to have smaller groups um, that uh, smaller groups from the larger family of God who meet together in 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 a in a home or in some place so that they can build relationships. They could also have fellowship. They can also grow in spiritual fellowship and also grow together in God's word and following uh, God together. So discipling one another, right, in, in smaller groups called as life groups. And we see that this is something that also took place at the early church. Uh, two verses here, Acts 2, 46 and Acts 5, 42. Acts 2, 46 reads, so continuing daily with one accord in the, in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. And Acts 5 verse 42, and daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So the life groups, there are, there are basically two or three objectives that it has. One is you uh, 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 there are deeper relationships that take place which sometimes may not take place in a huge in a huge um, church family right because there are so many people so when there are smaller groups there is a lot of relationships that that are grow and that are nurtured there and secondly it is where discipleship takes place okay so it is important because the, this is where um, uh, these two things the relationships and the discipleships uh, happen Okay, um, so uh, th this is, um, and, and to doing it regularly is the idea of being able to do it regularly to come together in worship or, <clears throat> or prayer or reading the word together. Okay, um, next, uh, we'll, we'll move into the next one, which is missions. Another place where um, nurturing takes place is nurturing takes place in the in personal spiritual growth and spiritual maturity is to being involved in missions so uh, what does it mean to be involved in missions it's to just uh, be to engage in some way to bring about the gospel uh, uh, the gospel to others or it is one way to fulfill the commission that Jesus had spoken about to make disciples of all nations. Okay, now this what does it involve? It involves, um, you know, speaking and preaching, uh, sharing God's word, the gospel, to those who are lost, and uh, keeping them, uh, bringing them to a place of discipleship as as uh, they grow in Christ. Okay, uh, so. For, for, for those in families, as parents, it's important to have that, that um, uh, uh, intended commitment to, uh, to being missionary you know, with, with the children so that they also understand that it is not just the responsibility of the leaders in the church or those adults, but it is each one of our responsibilities because the commission has been given to each one of us, right? Uh, and uh, so, so for the children to understand that it is an important part of our spiritual nurturance or spiritual growth. So a way to do this is to take children for those outreaches uh, so that they are also the experience that they are also involved in uh, in working for the kingdom of God, either by um, uh, either by preaching or by you know sharing the gospel or by discipling or even doing things that will help in the in the larger kingdom of God. Okay, so it's only when they see the family members do that, that it becomes like a thing to do, right? A commitment to do. And they will catch on to that, um, you know, when parents or when the older people in a family engage in, in that, uh, in this practice of missions, okay? The next part of uh, being part of a family is 
um, uh, is to, to, to be generous, to be able to show kindness, and to give, uh, to show generosity, to give and, and to share our tithe um, to the local church. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8, it reads, But this I say, who who's, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, have, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. So as families, we ensure that we nurture our children in generosity, in, doing, uh, in being kind to one another, in doing good to one another, as well as to tithe to the local church. Okay? Uh, and for this, we bring about what scripture says uh, as an example of how to do good, how to help others in need, and how to be able to tithe. And, and, this, and, and scripture talks about that. Okay? So one way of doing that, especially with children, is to, uh, you know, as, as you may be giving um, uh, allowances to your children, to encourage them to keep aside uh, a minimum of 10% of, of what they're getting so that they give to the Lord, so that they also sense that their contribution, they are alongside with others in the church, contributing to the to the work of God's kingdom. So helping them to do that and establishing that as a as a principle or as as something that is commonly done. Okay, and the last one is to uh, develop a kingdom mindset or to be kingdom focused. So we do that when we live our lives, communicating that everything we do, everything that we offer, is is focused with the kingdom in mind, okay? Whether it is um, it is what we're doing in our daily lives, the way that we speak, the choices that we make, the places that we go, uh, whatever we do, the focus is on seeking the kingdom of God first, okay? And only, and as we do that, to help understand that everything else would be added. Sometimes, the priority shifts or our priority changes where there may be many things that comes before seeking God, seeking uh, seeking um, His will, uh, coming to Him, uh, spending time with Him, all of that falls way down into the priority. But when we are kingdom focused or having a kingdom mindset, we're doing things in a way that will ensure that uh, we keep God at the center of everything that we do, where uh, where His uh, rule is what is takes place or is established in our everyday lives in everything that we do. So we do that only maybe as families or as parents. We have that set of a kingdom mindset or being absolutely kingdom focused. Okay, all right. Uh, we, we've completed with chapter 17. I'll just take a five minute, um, you know, a pause to check if there are any questions or any thoughts. If not, we will move right away into uh, chapter 16. Any thoughts or any, any questions that you may have? Uh, but, uh, you can hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, Anand. Okay, ma'am. Uh, my I'm Francis. Oh, Francis. Yes, Francis. Okay, my question is this: one. like uh, we can encourage people, uh, no, our childrens like us, uh, but uh, like once they uh, grown up, they are uh, living this world. They are looking and they are hearing from a lot of people. So I had an experience like us. Uh, this is uh, he's, he's a son of a pastor. So what happened is because of lot of problems instead of the church, he is saying like he not want to be a Christian. What is this ministry, and also how we can handle like a, such a situations of the children's man? 
Mm. Okay, so uh, again, uh, you know, I, I do see that this can be a problem in many Christian homes, and there is no judgment on anyone, uh, uh, anybody, you know, as we, we discuss this answer. Um, nevertheless, I think there are certain important things which we're also going to be looking at when we look when we are going to be learning nurturing children, all right? Nurturing children um, uh, in in faith, and we will these these are uh, uh, following chapters that will come. But um, one of the important things as Christian families is to be able to establish good establish a relationship with children. Uh, often, I think, you know, at homes, um, we lose the ability to have uh, real relationships with the children. And everything becomes about how, uh, you know, everything becomes very spiritual, right? And so what happens is when, when children do experience that the home is so stuck with only things that are spiritual and there isn't anything that a family does or creates that can be engaging, that can be fun, that can be enjoyable. The minute that uh, you know they experience something outside in the world where there are there is so much so many things that gratifies, it seems that you know it's it's easily moved. The, the shifting happens very, very quickly. And so it is a responsibility for parents to be authentic and to be true to the way that they nurture their children. The spiritual faith is absolutely foundational and necessary. Alongside with that, you're also building connections with the children, living life, you know, even when children come back. And we're going to be talking a lot about this in the next few chapters. Um, but living life, like for example, young people at this point of time go through so many challenges in the world that they're living in, right? Because they're bombarded with many ideas and philosophies at the tip of their fingers. And this causes confusion and causes questions. But when they come home, there isn't a place to discuss this because every time a question is bought, it is retorted with um, you know don't do that this is what this is what uh, uh, you know god wants you to do without a proper discussion what the parents are saying is right but nevertheless without engaging and deliberating a conversation and so what happens is a lot of these things are spoken outside you know there are many many young people or many people who want to share about uh, want to accept uh, you for for whatever you're believing in or for whatever you know you may have questions about and you they gravitate to people who may who may have acceptance so so within a family and especially christian family or especially families where there is where there are leadership in spiritual leaders that's there it's also important to build genuine connections with children where they're also living life and understanding that life in itself brings challenges and it is through the light of scripture that you can guide people by being very real and authentic and and uh, building connections so that's that's something that's extremely important a lot of people a lot of young people move away because they they do not have this connection they do not have a place uh, where they can deliberate and talk and um, uh, receive with acceptance or uh, are being received in acceptance and love, but they are shunned for what they are, what they think of or what they believe. So to come uh, for families to nurture the younger ones in their homes genuinely, you know, knowing that there are pressures, knowing that there, there are struggles, not always dismissing it as you know you you're not walking with God and that's why you're in things like this. And, and that in itself could put people up. So it's not a one point answer that you can change in a day. This happens over years. It's a connection that is being built over, over years. It's that relationship uh, which parents build with children that helps them 
to see the love of God. It helps them also to um, deliberate with their parents, maybe things or ideas that they see very differently, right? So um, it's it's through connection that these changes can be made. Francis, I hope I answered your question. Yes, yes ma'am. But it, this situation is like, is the situation has happened on this pastor, is a leader, so because of that situation he faced that that is the reason the boy who talked with me he said okay ministry is hard the christian life is hard he don't want to be a christian or uh, something like mm -hmm. that so like uh, i don't got any answer to share at that time so i'm asking about that is a pastor's son or a leader son how to mm -hmm. handle it? so even if it is a pastor's son or a or a church going person's son it's the same principle, right? Being a pastor's son doesn't make it any different. I mean, the pastor is still a father. The pastor is still a human father who needs to establish a relationship with his son uh, to answer questions or answer whatever issues that's happened in the ministry that has made this child go away to address and talk about it and, and discuss it and make conversations about it. It still remains the same whether it's the leader or whether it's just uh, uh, you know whether it's it's a it's it's someone who's not a leader you as a parent <clears throat> your responsibility towards your children is to build conversations even about things in the ministry or even about things that may have gone wrong so one of the things that we should remember is that people are flawed people can can make mistakes people can go wrong but that does not minimize at all God, uh, what he desires of us, what his word is. So um, people can go completely uh, off course. And that's where we establish that we're all flawed. We're all, um, we're all sinners. And we, are, we can make many, many mistakes. But it is the grace of God, it is the love of God that brings us back. So just like the way God sees us, we as believers also see others who have been flawed. So if this young man has been offended because of something, because of something that's happening in the ministry, to understand that that doesn't mean God and his word and his work is minimized. People flaw, uh, people make mistakes. and and. It is to build up people, build them br back into um, into that state of repentance and and redemption. So that's that's what it is, and these can happen only through conversations, Francis. It's not like I said; it's not a one-off thing. So even a pastor needs to talk to his children about things that they may have been offended in the ministry, and have a right perspective of it. So again, it's not not always to are things sorted out well enough? Maybe there is a certain time that children uh, stray, especially pastor's children, they stray, and then they may come back. But nevertheless, as a community, we're all responsible to encourage and build others in the faith. OK? All right, we'll move. Uh, we'll, I'll just start with an introduction on chapter 16, which is on page. Uh, 171 in the book and uh, page and page 169 169 in the book uh, in the um, in in the soft copy Okay, so here we are looking at um, uh, the the family altar and intercession. Okay, so we looked initially at building spiritual growth. We looked at the church first, but we're going to really focus on what it means for a family to come together in praying together, in building a family altar, in interceding for one another. What is the significance of it. So to start with, um, maybe I'll just open up this question. 
for a discussion. What do you think is the significance of having family prayer or a family altar? What is the significance? Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, the power of family prayer, I feel like um, that it's more effective. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I don't, did you say the full sentence? The power of family prayer is to be effective? Rin, can you repeat that, please? Pastor, I said uh, it will be more effective. What is more effective, sorry? The power of family prayer. When everyone gathers together, is that what you said? Okay, all right. So okay, the uh, so I said, what what is the significance? What happens when you come together as fam uh, together as family? So yeah, okay. Rin said it's more effective when when a lot of people in the family come together in one accord. It is more effective. Okay. What are the what is the other significance? It also brings us uh, closer to God and one another. Mm -hmm. Where we can be open before God because at that point in time, like even if we are not forgiven someone, we just have to forgive. And God brings about that unity and closeness. And there mm -hmm. might be some um, things that we might have ignored, not mm -hmm. looked because of our busyness, but when we pray together, then God will remind us, pray specifically for that, and mm. the, uh, develops as the family. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. So he brings people together. Um, differences are, are uh, ironed out there. God may remind the entire family uh, over things that's, that that may have been overlooked. All right. Anything else? OK, so um, now additional to what uh, Jackin and Rin also said, um, when, when uh, you honor the family altar, you're also bringing down the glory of God. You know, the presence of God is there when you gather together, it says, uh, when two, yeah, okay, I think Anthony has written that. When two or three are gathered, God is in their midst. That's absolutely right. So the glory of God ascends um, to to a home which honors family uh, family prayer. Okay, and what happens? The more of God's glory that is there upon a home, the less um, habitable it becomes for the powers of darkness, right? When there is light, there is the less chances of the powers of darkness being manifested there. So the glory of God shines forth at a home where there is the family altar, and it becomes less um, habitable for the evil power, for the powers of darkness uh, to, to operate, OK? Um, I think even Rin said there's a stronger bond is built because there will be repentance or edification. Yes. So because of repentance, uh, things are cleared out a lot more faster. Um, they build each one, uh, one another up um, in the faith. They build each one, and one another up in other things of life. So that's what uh, takes place. And that's what is the significance of the uh, of, of family prayer. Okay, so uh, when when we when we focus on um, building faith in the family, what we're doing is to is to have the children experience what it means to grow in faith, grow in maturity. So what would happen in a family altar is your we may read the word. We may um, pray, we may worship. Uh, the work of the Holy Spirit is manifested there. Um, we, we do all of this to ensure that you know, all members of the family are growing in, in, in their spirituality. 
So it, it's something that requires effort, it requires intention, and it requires consistency. Okay, So it is really necessary to want to see your family, uh, the parents or children or whoever is involved, to mature in their faith by engaging in prayer together. Um, uh, because, you know, a lot of times, uh, with, with the kind of challenges every person faces, uh, these things can be won only when we come to God in prayer than in any other way. Okay? So uh, the importance of that family prayer, and we're going to be looking at different areas of how a family can intercede for one another. Okay, So through um, uh, using scripture in itself, what are some ways that a family can intercede or members of the family can intercede for one another. So we will look at that um, in the next one hour. OK, let's take a break uh, for 10 minutes and we will come back at 11 o'clock. Right. 